Hi, this is Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for chronic liver failure. So first, what does the liver actually do? Well, it's actually very important. Uh, it participates in bile production and excretion. It gets rid of bilirubin, cholesterol, hormones, and a lot of drugs pass through the liver's um, system. It metabolizes fats, proteins, carbohydrates. It participates in enzyme activation, storage of glycogen, vitamins, and minerals. It synthesizes plasma proteins, such as albumin, and clotting factors, and also blood detoxification and purification. So what are the reasons for a liver to fail over time? Well, there's actually quite a few, and I've broken them up into a few categories. You can have an infection, such as one of the hepatitis uh, a, B, or C, immune system issues such as autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis. There are genetic issues which can affect the liver like Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis, alpha-1 antitrypsin. Various cancers can cause the liver to fail. And then there's other ones, chronic alcohol abuse, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and then there's some prescription medications that can cause liver failure. So here are the various stages. First, uh, you start with inflammation in the liver, which uh, over time can then lead to fibrosis, which is scarring, and then cirrhosis, um, and then eventually you reach end-stage liver disease and probably end up needing a transplant. So what are the risk factors? Well, heavy alcohol use is probably number one um, worldwide. Obesity, type 2 diabetes, uh, various tattoos or body piercings can lead to hepatitis. Injecting drugs using shared needles also can lead to hepatitis. Um, if you had a blood transfusion before 1992, exposure to other people's blood and body fluids, unprotected sex, exposure to certain chemicals or toxins, and family history. So let's look at the traditional treatments before we jump into stem cell therapy. Uh, these treatments are not great. There are various medications such as diuretics, um, or blood pressure medication, those are not going to fix anything. They're just going to help with symptoms. Uh, lifestyle changes, such as with obesity, weight loss can help. Um, if the liver failure is due to excessive alcohol use, then you know stopping alcohol. Supportive care, and then a liver transplant um, end stage. So interesting to note that the liver is actually the only organ that has regenerative capabilities. It is the heaviest organ in our bodies and you can actually remove up to 70-80% of a person's liver and the rest of it will regenerate the rest of the organ, which is an amazing feat um, in the human body. So a little bit about liver transplants. Before a transplant patient gets on a waiting list, they actually need to show proof of funding for 20% because Medicare pays 80%, so someone has to pay for the additional 20%. So that's typically why, and most insurances have a 20% you know, patient participation. There are 14,000 people in the U.S. on the waiting list. The average wait time is about 239 days. The cost of a liver transplant is a little over 800,000, so you have to have you know, 162,000 or so. There are a lot of exclusions, and it's very rare for someone over the age of 70 to be offered a liver transplant. So let's look at some stem cell therapy papers um, for liver failure. You know, stem cell therapy is a new paradigm. It can help repair and regenerate damaged tissue as opposed to simply just treating symptoms like a big fat band-aid. So this is a paper from 2012 out of China. Human mesenchymal stem cell transfusion is safe and improves liver function in acute on chronic liver failure patients. So they included 43 liver failure patients, 24 actually received the umbilical cord stem cells, uh, 500,000 stem cells per kilogram, three times um, once per month. So 500,000 per kilogram, the average human weighs about 70 kilograms or so, so that's 35 million stem cells once a month for three months. Um, the umbilical cord transfusions significantly increased the survival rates. Uh, stem cell patients had increased serum albumin, cholinesterase, prothrombin activity, and increased platelet counts. Serum total bilirubin and alanine aminotransferase levels were significantly decreased 
after the transfusions as well. So the end conclusion was that the transfusions are safe in the clinic and may serve as a novel therapeutic approach for hepatitis associated acute on chronic liver failure patients. So fantastic results. So mesenchymal stem cell therapy for cirrhosis, present and future perspectives. This was a few years ago. Um, although cell therapy for cirrhosis has demonstrated that uh, various hematopoietic mesenchymal stem cells can improve liver function and deliver beneficial effects in terms of liver regeneration, um, the therapeutic mechanisms responsible for these effects are still far from being fully characterized. Basically what that's saying is that what we've seen is that these treatments work really well for something like liver failure. We don't know exactly how they work. We have a good idea, but we don't know for sure. So this is a list of clinical studies that have used mesenchymal stem cells in patients with cirrhosis. It's a lot, we're not gonna go through each one, but I did just wanna point out that you can see on the right that there were no significant side effects or complications, okay? Um, these used either bone marrow, umbilical cord, um, and they were given mostly through uh, an IV, a peripheral vein. You had some that went right into the hepatic artery or into the spleen or something like that, um, but that is not necessary. These studies were done all over the place, China, Egypt, Iran, Korea, Sweden, so on and so forth. All right, here's a study uh, out of Korea, mesenchymal stem cell therapy for liver fibrosis. They noted that um, when you give stem cells, there's a significant hepatocyte-like cell differentiation, uh, which is fantastic, which means that the stem cells themselves, or they can push the body's own stem cells to move into the liver line um, and help out. There's a significant immune modulatory potential of the mesenchymal stem cells, which means that they can protect the body from fighting against itself. They did secrete a lot of growth factors called trophic factors, which can help in the repair process. And they help to prevent scar um, as well as oxidative stress. So here are some completed clinical trials uh, using stem cells to treat chronic liver disease. Once again, um, you can see that these are done all over the place, Iran, Sweden, Egypt, China, Korea. And once again, they were either given through <clears throat> an IV uh, in the vein um, or right into the spleen or into the liver. Um, autologous, 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 um, allogeneic, like umbilical cord, um, so on and so forth. And basically all of these had significant improvements, okay? So stem cell therapy worked really well, and none of these had any significant complications. Stem cell transplant for advanced stage liver disorders. Um, this was actually what's called a meta-analysis, where the uh, authors looked at many, many studies to see if they could pull them together, and they did look at hundreds of studies. The stem cell-based interventions provide significant improvement with patients with chronic liver disease. The studies clearly indicated that stem cells played a key role in liver protection process uh, by reducing inflammation, um, autoimmune suppression, meaning stopping the body from fighting itself, uh, enhancing new blood flow, and anti-apoptosis. What that means is it stops uh, hepatocytes and other cells from dying. So if you have less cells dying and more cells living and performing you know, necessary functions, the liver uh, improves. The studies indicated that stem cells derive paracrine factors, meaning cell-to-cell -cell communication, which promoted new blood flow, redu reduced inflammation, and helped liver cells live longer. So in conclusion, you know, I just showed a few studies, but there's many small studies, early clinical trials, and our own experience, um, shows that stem cell therapy for liver failure is not only safe, but it's typically very effective in patients who just don't have great options. The medications aren't fantastic. Um, a liver transplant has significant issues and it's very expensive. So key points that we saw in, uh, when we looked at the studies is that it looks like high stem cell numbers are necessary. You do not need to inject right into the hepatic vein. And umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells gives fantastic results 
just like you saw in the autologous studies when you use someone's bone marrow or fat. So I do always want to point out that embryonic stem cell therapy and induced pluripotent stem cell therapy are not ready for prime time. They're still in the research phases by a long shot. They have significant issues such as embryonic stem cells when you um, put them into the IV, they get rejected very quickly. They also can cause tumors. We don't have any of those issues with the mesenchymal stem cells that we use clinically. Okay, so if someone says to you, oh, you should get an embryonic stem cell therapy, no, run away from that. Um, our, ours have been shown to be safe. They do not form tumors. We've never had a significant complication to date in over eight years and 15,000 procedures. So let's talk about our, our international treatment program in Pakistan. Our treatment center is in the Islamabad area. So we serve Islamabad and Rawalpindi locally and we have people coming in from all over the country. The process starts with a free phone consultation. Our licensed experienced stem cell doctors will speak to you, look at your medical records, and deem whether or not you know your you or your loved one is a candidate for the procedure and what it would take to give you the best outcome okay it's um, vital to note that stem cell therapies are not a cure for liver failure but they can dramatically help so what that means is it's not a one and done phenomenon you might need one and it might look do well for 12 to 24 months and then you'll need to have it done again we do have a patient concierge representative who assists with all of your travel logistics i do want to talk about the cells um, we use umbilical cord stem cell tissue that comes from the u.s um, we have a pristine safety record with our our umbilical cord blood um, tissue we've never had a rejection reaction we've never had uh, anybody have a communicable disease. We process our tissue with the FDA quality assurance standards. These are very pure, very potent stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes, microRNA. It's a full orchestra of regenerative elements that you will receive. Um, we do have a medical director for R3 International, Dr. De La Puerta, um, who assists with um, difficult cases, um, and uh, we also have a highly experienced doctors in Pakistan who do the procedures. R3 has been featured on all the major media outlets. Um, we've been uh, performing procedures for over eight years now. We were recently named one of the 10 most innovative companies of the year, one of the 50 smartest companies of the year. And we were also named the USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider. So to start the process, uh, just give us a call um, on the US prefix at 888 9880515 and you can read a lot more about um, our treatments and uh, how it works at r3stemcell.com/pakistan thank you very much for watching